In this part of the video, we're going to learn about how to transition the sewing machine into an embroidery machine. There's more to it than just sliding on the unit. We've got to make some other changes too. In the manual on page 27 is a quick start guide, which is a great thing to look at even if you've done this before to make sure you get all the steps correct. First, we have to turn the sewing machine off. Next, we're going to take off the foot. We press on the back here and it releases the foot. Put that my accessory box. And we're going to take off the ankle. You will need one of the screwdrivers. I prefer the larger one in order to do this. There we go. And now we have the ankle off. While I'm at it, I'm going to take out my thread because embroidery uses a different type of thread. And I'm also going to take out my thread at the top. Next, we're going to take the needle out. This is the needle bar and the needle screw. If we look at the end of the screw, we can see that there is a spot for a screwdriver. So if this is in too tightly, we can use the screwdriver, but you must hold on to the needle while you release it. I happen to be able to release it, but there, remember, you have that L screwdriver for a reason. So now we're going to take this out. Using the embroidery machine requires special embroidery needles. Although some people like just using an 11 sharp, I prefer ones that are designed for embroidery. Either way, you should always start with a fresh needle when you're switching your machine over into embroidery mode. At this point, the instructions tell me to put a new needle back in. I personally prefer to wait until I have more things done so the needle's not in my way. Now we have to change out the plate. Currently in the machine is the regular stitch plate. It has a wide opening, and we're gonna change it out to the straight stitch plate, which has a small opening for the needle to pass through. It also has a red dot to help you know which one it is. Over time though, the red dot can wear off. Use one of the screwdrivers to loosen these screws, and then you will be able to just run your finger around them to loosen them the rest of the way, most of the time. Once they get going, they come out pretty easy. You will need these screws to put the other one in, so please don't lose them. They should only be out for a moment, so hopefully you can't lose them in that time. Now we're going to lift this one off. I'm just going to put the cover back on because it actually goes with it. So I don't want to misplace that. And now the new one goes on. This is also a great time to check to see if you have a bunch of lint down here and need to do a good cleaning. Mine looks pretty good, so we'll leave it alone. There we go, the straight stitch plate is on. And now we just need to put those screws back on. You can certainly get them most of the way tight by hand, but I do suggest that you use that screwdriver to do the last little tiny turn because sewing machines have a lot of vibration and it can actually slowly loosen these screws. So you wanna make sure that they're not too loose when you start. So we have the straight stitch plate on. Now we need to put the embroidery foot on. This part is going to go down. This will sit on top of the needle bar and this U here is going to go around that screw. You'll notice that the foot doesn't actually have enough room to go on. So we're going to take the screw completely out before putting this new foot on. So we're gonna slide this right on here and everything will be lined up and then we just put the screw right back in. You'll definitely want to make sure that you use the screwdriver, either the long one or the L one, to tighten this. As the embroidery foot gets lots of vibrations, you want to make sure that it is perfectly in place and very tight. So I'm going to put my foot down and just make sure everything seems to be working right. And I'm going to run my needle up and down. There we go. Now we need to replace the needle in our machine. We could have done it right after taking out the old one, but I decided to wait to do a couple other steps first so the needle wasn't in my way. 
A very popular type of needle are these organ anti-glue needles. They are specifically for embroidery and especially great if you like using temporary spray adhesive or sticky stabilizer. Some people like to just use a size 11 sharp needle, but I prefer using one labeled for embroidery because the shape of the needle point is slightly different. Sewing machine needles have a rounded front and a flat back, which is almost impossible to see on camera, but you can definitely feel it in your hand. One side is flat, and that flat part is going to face the back of the machine. You're going to line the needle up and then push upwards, and you want to keep lightly pushing until it has gone up as far as it will, and then we are going to tighten down the needle. I definitely recommend that you use your L screwdriver to get the needle nice and tight. As always, I like to test it and make sure it's going perfectly through the hole. The next step is to add the embroidery unit. So I'm going to take the accessory part off by just pulling sideways. And then I'm going to take the embroidery unit, again, not touching that center part. And then I'm going to push it into place until I hear a click. The release to take it off is over here on the end underneath. You push up and you pull. You will have to hold the machine from coming with you. So that's how you release it. And then you let that release off and push into the machine to sync it up. One of the best ways to get that app is to simply open your photo program and hold it in front of the QR code for either Google Play or Apple Store. I am using Android today, so we're going to go to Google Play Store, and then we just click Go To Store, and we have the app right here ready for us. The icon for this app is brown and white. There are several other Eversone machines, including the X, that will have different color icons, so make sure it's brown. Then I'm going to press Install. It will take a few minutes to install, but eventually it will say Open and then you can open the Sparrow X2 app. Welcome! The app will walk you through how to connect your machine to this app, but I'm also gonna do the same thing. Read or swipe through these pages as quickly as you wish. They just give you a basic overview of the app. On the last page here, you can press the check mark and then it will finish loading the program. The app is almost ready for us to use. There we go. Now you need to allow the Eversone to access your photo and media. I mean, you could press deny, but you likely are going to want to be able to get to some files on your phone. So press allow to access the device's location. I always pick only while using the app. So here we are in the app, and now it's time to take a look through. We have patterns here. You have your designs. Those are any that you've added. And you see, I've already added some designs before. All designs will take you to all of them and you just scroll down along the side here to see the different ones. I know I'm going really fast. Don't worry. You can take all the time you want to look through these. You have them divided into categories as well. Floral, animals, and on the side here, you can pull it down to see other categories like frames, motifs, hobby, holidays, home, scenery, patches, and bonus. We're going to go back using the top arrow, and then you can look for the other options here. You can have text, which is adding text onto your project. You can input files by looking through your phone or even on your Google Drive, you can look and find files that you have placed there. More Designs. More Designs tells you all the different formats that you can use in this 
app, which is great because you don't have to just get one type of file. You can use lots of different ones. More Files also takes you to the Embroidery Online website where you can download lots of different patterns to use. Over on the side, there's this little green tag. And if you pull it out, you can add a connection. You can put your machine in your router network. You can learn about the machine function setting, or you can read some instructions. We are gonna to connect to the machine shortly. I just wanted to show you these embroidery functions. They're super helpful. In the thread cutting settings, you can choose whether your thread are cut automatically and how long they're cut and whether they should trim when you do thread colors or when the embroidery is finished. Auto lock means whether it locks off at the beginning and the end. These are all personal options. You can decide what you like best. Upper thread sensor, I personally really like that one. The bobbin thread sensor, sometimes it's useful to shut it off. For example, the machine will stop when you're getting low on bobbin thread, but you still have a fair amount left. So when the machine stops and gives you that warning, you can come in here and turn off the bobbin thread sensor, which will allow you to use the rest of that bobbin thread, but you gotta stick by the machine so you can stop it when it's run out. This text zoom limitation has to do with changing the size of the embroidery. Embroidery files are meant to be a certain size and you can only change them a little bit before things go wrong. And down here, you can see your app version, any firmware that has been updated on your machine, and you can reset all of these to factory setting so that you don't have to wonder what it originally was or you're not sure if you picked the right thing. Just reset them and they will all be just like they were at the beginning. It's time that we connect our machine to our app. So we need to turn the machine on and then it will say PP, which means point to point. But if you're not sure, you can always check down here and see if the error code shows up. If not, there's a longer list in the book. So the machine says PP and I am going to add a new connection. So I can set up the router mode connection or I can set up point to point. And I want to set up point to point connection. And that's where it tells me that it should be on PP and that top light should be blinking. Once I've confirmed that's true, I'm gonna press confirm. Next up, I need to connect to this machine. Down at the bottom, it asks me to select the Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi is what's coming from this machine. So I can select it right there. It will pull up in my Wi-Fi menu. And then I just have to wait for a moment till my embroidery machine, which is its own network, shows up. Once it's connected, I am going to go back in to the app. You can press backwards here. So we go back. I'm back until we're back in the app. Right there, it said connected. Please lift the presser foot up. Please remove the hoop. It's not on yet. Turn the hand wheel to bring the needle to the highest position. Yep, it's at the highest position. And then change to the straight stitch plate. Well, we have already done that, so we are ready to go, and we're gonna press. Then it is going to move this part around to calibrate it, and now we're ready to stitch out our first design. And the machine says, go. You also have the option to attach your machine to the router in your house. The benefit to that is that you can also use your phone or device to do other things because right now my device can't see the regular internet. It can only see the embroidery machine's internet. It has no Wi-Fi. Despite that, I still recommend that everyone start with a point-to-point -point connection because it allows you to get started quickly and easily. 
Machine embroidery requires specific machine embroidery bobbin thread and top thread. Well, technically you can use machine embroidery thread on the top and in the bottom. It's not recommended and it's only for use in very specific projects, like if you're making lace where both sides will be seen or other projects where both sides will be seen. Embroidery thread can come in many different types of cones or spools and they can be large or small. I even have some isocord spools that are enormous. If you are using a spool that is very large, you will want to use a stand that goes behind your machine. And that's really meant for people who do a ton of machine embroidery. These type of spools will work just fine on this machine and don't need any special adaptations. So first we're going to make up a bobbin my thread spool here is very open in the middle. So I have purchased this adapter that makes it so it will fit on a standard machine. You can also just buy bobbin thread on a much smaller spool. The rubberized piece is on here, keeping it from falling off. Otherwise, I would have a spool cap. The thread is gonna go under this hook, around here, and then it does this lovely little zigzag here, over, then around, and it comes under here and you give it a little pull so it seats. Then we have our extra thread and we are going to put it through the hole in the top of our bobbin. We set our bobbin on top here. We push it sideways. Now it says SP on the front of the machine. So now we can go. I'm going to stop it after just a moment. Cut the extra and press start on the front of the machine again. Having a well-wound bobbin is incredibly important to your final product. I suggest that you wind it on slow or moderate speed. When your bobbin is full, press it this way, cut the thread, and you're ready to put it in the machine. The bobbin thread also goes in just like the regular sewing machine. Our thread is set up like a P. We drop it in here and then it goes on a little race around this obstacle course. The last spot is a thread cutter and then we're ready to go. We just put the cover right back on. When it comes to your very first project, it's easy to get stuck in analysis paralysis, meaning overthinking. I know there's so many amazing designs out there, but you're gonna learn so much just by doing your very first project. So it doesn't actually matter what it is. It matters that you do it. So look through for a few minutes, see if there's something that really speaks to your heart, but then just pick something. You're going to learn so much this first time that the next project will go so much quicker. You don't want to waste that time just trying to decide what to make. All you got to do is make something. Pick a design and go. In order to pick a design that will help you have a successful first round, we are going to go into patterns and then you can pick literally any of them that you want, but I'm going to go down into patches. Patches has some really simple designs and that makes it easy for our first run. Let's pick this lightning bolt to start with. From the left to the right, we have the stitch count. Then we have the size. Then we have the number of threads, colors, and the number of times you have to change them. I have decided we are going to do this birds and hearts. And that's because there's one thread change, so I get to walk you through that. It is a small design, so it's going to fit in our smallest hoop. And it's adorable. It actually reminds me of these little hair clips I had as a kid, so that's why I'm doing it. So let's look at the materials we have laid out for this. I have our small hoop. I have quilters cotton laid out here and I have a mesh, no see-through stabilizer because this is kind of a light shade of fabric and it's not terribly thick. 
I don't want to see the stabilizer outline through it, so I have used this mesh no C stabilizer. Every project you do is going to need stabilizer, but it depends on what the project is about what kind of stabilizer you want. This happens to be a cutaway, and I don't know what I'll do with this later, so I'm just being safe and using a cutaway to begin with. I already have my thread colors. We're going to do exactly the colors that the app have, but you absolutely can change them. Now I'm going to put these on the small hoop. Oh no, it exceeds the embroidery area. That's okay. Only in case that I know that I can rotate this and it will fit. I'm also going to click on it and then go to my arrow that says move and then click these arrows that all point together. And that means to center it. This is also the perfect opportunity to start looking at those colors if you want to change them around. At the bottom of the screen, just beyond patterns, there's an arrow. If you click it to go sideways, it has things like text, color, sequence, and basting. Text is where you would add words to your design. Press the little X here to get out of that menu. Color is where you would play with the color of your design. This black here at the top, that is just your basting box color. You can click on each color at the top and it will take you to the exact color that the designer of this pattern had in mind. But you can really make these any colors that you want. You can scroll through, look at a lot of different color options, and get a chance to debut them on screen so you can see if maybe a different color is the right one for you. On the brand list here, you can scroll through and find different colors on different brand lists. And if the, you use the button here that goes different colors to those gray colors, that will change everything to that color. Isn't that fun? You can get a design all one color. And if you just want to change the colors that were originally there, I'm going to press the back button and back again to go back to our original here. If you just want to change the brand, so when I click here, it's a King Star brand. If I wanted to change this to ARC Poly or Isocore, I just select the brand I want and the A to B button. It will change the numbers and names on the colors to coordinate with another brand of thread. It does really help to be able to visualize different colors here. And if you happen to have a color with a specific number on it, you might as well just pull it up in the app so you can see how all those colors work together. I'm gonna click back on the top left here. And lastly, we have basting. I think basting is wonderful. It helps hold everything together. So I like to select basting. Now it's time for us to hoop our materials. Always use the smallest hoop that you can for your project. It will save you on stabilizer in the long run. And also it makes it a lot easier to get a really good drum-like texture to your fabric so everything stitches out well. Everything I say about the small one is true about the large one. So let's just focus on the small one right now. This piece inside here is removable and it is used to help you center your fabric and make sure your stitch out is gonna be exactly where you want it. There is a very thin layer of film on here. You can remove if you'd like, or you can leave it for now, and if it gets dirty later, you can remove it as well. This goes in one way, even though you can put it in other ways, you only want to put it the way where this picture looks like the thing you're looking at. So the arm is over here and this is over here. This is the way it would be in properly. And you wanna make sure you do this if you are using this. We don't need it for this project, so let's toss that to the side. When you get your hoop, it's all gonna be pretty tight so everything holds together but you will have to open it in order to get some fabric inside. To loosen it, you just screw with your fingers right here and the center part will fall out. So when you are hooping your fabric, your fabric and stabilizer go here and this goes on top. Right here we have a triangle and another triangle here. And this means you know that the hoop is going the correct way. 
even though you can technically fit it in this way, it doesn't fit as smoothly. So you wanna make sure you are following those arrows when you put it in. This white piece here is the quick release. It makes it so you can quickly add some extra space in the hoop to get your project in and out. It also means if you're hooping the exact same stuff over and over again, you never have to adjust your screw. You can just adjust this part. And this is our microchip computer connector. If you were ever using spray adhesives, you do need to cover this to make sure it doesn't get anything on it. Because if this is not clean, it cannot connect to the computer. To put your material in, you need to make sure that you have enough to go around and completely cover and go out on all sides. This time I am using this no-show mesh stabilizer because my fabric that I've chosen is pretty lightweight and kind of a pale color, so I don't want the rough edges of a more solid white or another color showing through, so I've gone with this mesh no-see. Put that on top, and this on top here, and then knowing that I already have my triangle lined up properly, you can always move things and check, lay everything on top, slide this in and push from away to the side that has the screw. Now I'm struggling here a little bit. That probably means my screw is a bit too tight still. I'm struggling more than a little bit. So we're gonna open our screw just a touch and try again. Lay everything on top, start away and push towards. Oh, this one's gonna go in, see, smooth, there we go. So let me give you a quick example. See, see, this is hard to come out. This is exactly the way I want it. Let me use my quick release here, like I would be done at the embroidery machine, and then I can take it out. So I'm gonna close my quick release, and I'm gonna make this like really big so you guys can see what's too easy. Lay my fabric over it, make sure my triangle's still in the right spot, and right there, oh, that just went in. And if I try to pop it out, it pops out super easy. So that is too easy. It is absolutely okay to rehoop things several times. It will help you get a better feel for what is what you want. So start with edge farthest away and push. And it should struggle just a touch. And when you pull this, it should not just come out. There should be some resistance. So then you would put this in the embroidery machine and when you're done, you're going to open this and everything will release right out. Once you have your project in the frame and you know it's not popping out easily by pulling the fabric, you can check the screw and tighten it just lightly. If it moves a little bit, you can tighten it, but don't just really, really pull and turn it. It's meant for the lightest touch if a light touch will make it tighter, go ahead. If you're moving it more than a little bit, you probably didn't have it tight enough to begin with and you should just adjust this and start over trying to hoop it. What can happen is if you are adjusting this a lot, you can end up getting a fold or a pleat right here where the edges have come together and that can cause some distortion in your fabric. So as much as possible, you want everything to go in right the first time or just the slightest adjustment on here when you're done. Beyond fabric distortion, worst case scenario, if you over tighten, you can actually break or crack your hoop. So be very careful when you are screwing that only the lightest touch and if you are really, really turning it tight, you are liable to break it. It's better to just re-hoop instead of pulling that screw very tight. When it's time to put your project in the machine, make sure that your presser foot and needle are up. Because we're in the embroidery mode, you will need to crank it by hand and not just press the up and down button. When this is all the way to the top, you know the needle is all the way up. The microchip is going to go towards the back. We slide our hoop in, tuck our fabric under the foot and align everything. Then we're just going to slide 
it backwards. If your presser foot doesn't quite pass this, you can always lift it up a little bit farther. Then just guide your project back straight and it will click into place. If you're feeling any pressure while you're pushing it backwards, try to line it up as straight as possible so you're not twerking it at all. I can now press preview on the app and it will ask me if I want to clean it up. And because my hoop is installed, it will let me. And then if I click any of those four corners, it will move the hoop to where that location is. It can be a nice way to figure out exactly where your design is, particularly when you're using a larger hoop and a smaller pattern, or you want to get the design in a very specific spot on your fabric. On our machine, we need to go to the tension setting and reduce it to 2.5. That will make sure that our top thread goes to the bottom and we get a beautiful stitch out without any of our bobbin thread being seen on top and also not using too much of our top thread on bottom. This first stitch out will allow you to see where your top thread is landing on the bottom and then you can adjust from there. I'm gonna press send to machine. The file is transferring now. Now it tells me here that the first color is black and you're like, well, there was no black in this. What's going on, Alice? That black is the standard color used to denote the base stain, which means if you added that base stain box, which I suggest, you're always gonna have black as your first color. Don't worry. I just put the first color that was already going to be on there and let it do the basting box in that. There's no reason that it has to be black. Embroidery thread is put on your machine the exact same way as any other thread, except a thread net is often added to help it from unraveling too quickly. A thread knit is absolutely needed if you are using metallic thread. As it unravels so quickly, you just got to use one. So we are going to thread it the same way we did before. Around the back, down, under, around, down, and now we are down to where the needle is. Threading your embroidery machine works the exact same way as threading a regular machine. When you started threading, your needle was up and your presser foot was up. Well, your needle still needs to be up, but now we need to put our presser foot down to make room for the automatic needle threader. I'm going to press down on the threader and it's going to click into place. Now I'm going to take my finger behind here and just give it a quick press to make sure it's all the way engaged through the needle eye. We're then going to take our thread. I'm going to pop it underneath this hook here. Then it's gonna go underneath the hook in the eye and this little hook past it. I'm gonna draw it up and cut it off at the thread cutter on the inside edge. Now I'm going to pick up and it will pull a small loop through the back. All we have to do is grab that loop and pull it through. If you'd like a little bit of extra thread when you start, you're going to need to lift your presser foot and pull some extra out because when the presser foot is down, it will not let you pull that thread. At this point, you could also look at your other settings to see if there's anything else you wanted to change. I like the auto lock at the beginning and the finishing of the stitch out. I'm going to leave my bobbin sensor and upper thread sensor on. And thread cutting settings, I'm going to leave it just as is. That sounds perfect to me. So now I'm going to press OK and press start on the machine. Please lower the presser foot. I always forget that. Please check upper thread. It looks like the thread managed to pull out, so I'm just going to re-thread it real quick. So I have taken a few stitches without anything happening. So I can use the buttons at the bottom here to back up stitch by stitch or to the beginning of the entire stitch out. I can even go color by color, but we're just going to start here because it's just the basting box. 
I don't have to necessarily be as specific about which stitch I'm starting at. The basting box really holds all the layers together, which is wonderful for getting a precise and beautiful stitch out. This is the notification you'll receive at any point where you need to change the thread color. But because we're not actually changing the thread color, we're just gonna keep going. Pressing OK, saying I changed the thread color, even though I didn't. Now it, you can leave the thread tail as is, or you can get a bit a little tug to make sure there's some extra so it doesn't come unthreaded again. Never hurts to have a little extra. You stop it after a few stitches, and if it has a thread tail, this is the time to cut it. But sometimes the thread tail does dip underneath. You can watch the progress on the app as you go. Now it's time to change the thread color over to red. I want to point out something just for a moment. You may have thought, wow, that's stitching out quickly. Remember, this is the speed control. It works for both the embroidery machine and the regular sewing machine. If you're having any type of problem, especially needles breaking, you need to run your machine at a slower speed. Now, once you get everything optimized, meaning the thread is coming off smoothly, the machine is threaded perfectly, and your needle fabric and stabilizer are all working together, yeah, you can run the machine at high speed, 100%. However, if one of those things is off, you are liable to run into some problems, and having the machine at a slower speed helps to kind of compensate for those issues. So if this is your first time doing machine embroidery or you're having any issues, I suggest you slow it down a bit until everything is perfect. I'm a bit of a speed demon though. Let's change up the thread to red. So I have taken the thread off the top and now I'm just going to trim it. I'm going to raise the presser foot because you need to do that to take the thread out anyway and then you're gonna pull it from the bottom. Then re-thread your machine with a new color. Always remember, press your foot up and needle up. I'm gonna press OK on my app. I'm going to start here. Let it take a couple of stitches. Then I'm going to pause it and look for my thread tail. I'm going to then cut my thread tail so that it does not interfere with the embroidery design. And then we press start again. And there we go, our first stitch out is complete. You can save this design if you would like. So you have it for the future. Not necessarily important with this because it is a basic design that already was on the app, but if you make customizations, save away. So our project is done, and now we need to get it off of the machine. We're going to, of course, lift our presser foot and then we are going to release the hoop by pressing here and then pulling it straight off. If your hoop is getting caught here, you can always push your presser foot farther up, but it's rarely needed. Remember, just pull it straight. If you're feeling any tension, work on straightening it out. To quickly release your project from the hoop, you can pull this up and it will loosen the hoop a significant amount, which makes it very easy to take it out quickly. You have your design here. There's just a few little things that we need to do to make it absolutely finished. One is we want to cut these jump threads. You just cut them sh close to the project. Now we have our basting. And I am just going to release this basting. It's very simple because embroidery thread is super slippery, which makes taking these basting stitches out 
even easier here. And this is our final design. I can flip it over to the back and I can cut any other excess threads that I want. But it's really unnecessary to do a lot of cleanup. At this point, it's personal preference. Lastly, we are going to cut away the remainder of our stabilizer. We don't need this anymore, and there's no reason for it to stay on here. So you're going to cut around your design with roughly a quarter of an inch left around it. Certainly, again, you could use bigger scissors that would make a lot of sense here, but I'm just gonna use these cute little ones because I have them out and I like using them. Be very careful not to cut your main fabric while you're doing this. There you go. If this design was, for example, on the inside of a shirt, you might want to put an iron-on product over it to keep it nice and soft against the skin. Now we're going to take a moment to evaluate the tension and see if you need to make any changes for your next project. I see a lot of white and a little bit of the colors from the top. That is perfect. If I saw a lot of the colors from the top and only a little bit of white, I would know I need to increase my tension. Increasing my tension would make the top thread pull harder, which would make less of it show on the bottom. And if some of this white had actually come through on the top, I would know that my tension in fact needed to be lower so that the top thread did not pull as much. Look at what we made. Isn't it cute? Do you have any idea what I'm gonna do with it? No, and that's okay. Getting through your first project is hard. And think of how much you have learned already. So your next project is going to be that much easier. You have gone a long way today, and I am super proud of you. So, do you know what you wanna make next? I know what I do. That lightning bolt is calling out to me. Or maybe some patches, like actually make them into patches. Check out the other Eversewn videos to learn more about what the X2 can do and for short troubleshooting videos. I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja here with Eversewn. Thank you for joining me.